at Colorado and and focuses um, on advanced prostate cancer, and that's he does manage the advanced prostate yep. cancer clinic there as well. And then lastly, we'll have Tom joining us as, as well. Um, and Tom um, is in from North Carolina. Um, Tom is a patient, um, and he'll just gonna talk a little bit about his experience. Um, Tom actually played football, I believe, at the University of Colorado. He did. And then uh, worked in the pharmaceutical industry for many years. So we'll, we'll hear some of those details later on. But without further ado, Dr. Source. All right, thank you. So uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, this is the first time doing a sort of online presentation for me. It's, it's a little weird. I'm originally from New York and I'm Italian background. So I use my hands a lot <laughs> and I like to walk. So um, we'll see how this goes. Basically, I have three. Well, I learned this in med school and it works pretty much in any presentation in business or anything. People are going to remember three things at most. So I try to keep things simple and I try to hammer home those three things. So I have a ton of slides today. Some of them get pretty complex. I'm not using them. I'm not going to read off them and this is not going to be a didactic lecture. I'm going to use them as a framework to hammer home three goals. Be an advocate for prostate cancer. Everyone here has actually taken that first step by just being here. Um, understand some basic things about the immune system. And then uh, last but not least, understand ProVenge. Um, and that's it. I'm going to hammer home those three things. If I just sit here and talk into this iPad, it's going to be boring for me and probably boring for you. Uh, I don't know how many people are online. Can they ask? They, they can just yeah, talk, anybody, right? Yeah, feel so free. I really... I sort of usually joke that if I go through halfway through and I haven't got a question, I'm going to call on somebody. <laughs> I don't know how I do that online, but I could probably just pick at a thing. So I, I really expect someone to ask questions. If you have a if you have a question, um, then how many people are online? It's not a lot of people, right? No, we got uh, six. So there's not a huge amount of people here. So when it's a large group, I usually say, if you have a question that's personal, wait to the end, but if it's about prostate cancer, um, please ask it or anything I say, please ask it right then. If we have such a small group, I would just say, let's make this a discussion. My time is here for you guys, all right? So this is only gonna be educational if you guys get your question answers and anything that you didn't don't understand, I have time to explain. Even if it's something, let's say, hey, I have this prostate cancer, what are your thoughts? You should probably wait to the end for that. But otherwise, it's like I had this therapy, I had this therapy, whatever would I qualify for Provenge? That is completely appropriate. So that's for that. We're gonna start. Damien Source. Uh, again, I do um advanced prostate cancer. I'm from Denver, so I could finally hold my hand high here. And <laughs> and um I'm originally from New York. So I'm I actually used to be a Giants fan. So I guess they're they're my substitute team is is Denver. All right, do so slides. Yeah, so right, uh, usually I do the clicker. So I know, I know you want it. I know. Okay, you will do. they pop up here? Yeah. yeah. Let's see here. I got it open. Teddy Radio going is what you've got. All right. Uh, next. Hold on, I got an opener. There we go. Does it look right. Which you just press this button. Try, try it. Yeah. All right. Look good. at that. All right. You got a clicker. We, all right. We talked about our uh <laughs> we talked about our um yeah. we talked about our uh goals. Again, uh be an advocate uh both for yourself and for the disease process, uh, immune uh what is um, uh, your immune system and um provenge. All right. So prostate cancer is incredibly uh common. You may or may not know this. Uh, the general population has about a one in eight chance of developing prostate cancer at some point in their lifetime. Um, it is, uh, that re results in about 3 million men in the United States living with it. So you guys are not alone. And you were talking about that, Steve, you thought you were alone. There's 3 million men in the United States w living with prostate cancer, about a quarter million men a year are diagnosed with it. Most men with prostate cancer will die with prostate mm -hmm. cancer. Does that make sense? So about a quarter of a million men a year are diagnosed with it about 30,000 ish men die of it. Okay. So most men will die with it, not of it. That being said, it still is the number two cause of death of men in the United States. Um, African American men are at significantly higher risk, uh, one in six, and about twice the risk of dying of prostate cancer compared to the general population. So one in eight, one in six. Here's the first uh, digression. If you, everyone here has prostate cancer, 
except for me, <laughs> Nate, my father had prostate, but my father had prostate cancer or has prostate Did cancer. Did you have it before and you don't have it now? No, I, I no, I'm just, yeah, I've never had it, but my father has it. And he's was diagnosed about 12 years ago with metastatic prostate cancer. After you became a doctor? After I became, as, I was, I was in practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's still alive. Um, so I'm at twice the risk. That's the whole point of this, yeah. All right? So these risks of one in eight, one in six, every man's here's first degree relative. That would be a brother or a son. Um, and now those numbers are doubled or halved. So one in three and one in four. So be an advocate for the disease, meaning men don't listen to their wives when it comes to health stuff. We all, I mean, be honest, as a generalization, we don't. We don't listen to public service announcements. We don't do anything. We don't like going to the doctor i don't like going to the doctor and tom will talk about this right we all think we're superman right? right and so um but the list but your son may listen to you and your brother may listen to you and listen to your story so it's really important they're at twice those risks all right so one in three or one in four so that's the first digression all right second digression is i'm going to talk about some cancer terminology um don't feel embarrassed if you don't know what these are if there's some they're medical the medical ease they're designed to be confusing and some of the things I'm going to talk about are not on this slide here. So um, one is staging. Staging the cancer means how far has the cancer progressed, right? doesn't mean how, what, how aggressive it is or anything, how far has it, how far has it progressed. So every cancer has a stage, means how far has it progressed. Every cancer has a grade. That's not on this slide. A grade is how aggressive it is. That is Gleason score. So prostate cancer makes it doubly confusing because they have a Gleason score that starts at six. Six doesn't sound like a low number. <laughs> three plus three is the lowest cancer grade cancer out there. Most Gleason sixes are not treated. Okay. I know Doug here, you're saying you were just diagnosed. I don't know anything about your cancer, but most Gleason sixes we don't treat. Gleason sixes have about a 1% chance to one and a half, somewhere around a 1% chance of killing you at 15 years if you do nothing. So that's a Gleason six. And then it goes seven, eight, nine, ten. The higher, the more aggressive. The people who die of it, that thirty-ish thousand men a year, usually have the eight, nine, tens. Sometimes they have sevens, but usually eight, nine, tens. Okay. So that's stage and grade, progression, reoccurrence. Those are not medical ease. Progression means getting worse. Reoccurrence, it comes back. Refractory is a term that is not used in prostate cancer. We use the term resistant, as in castrate resistant prostate cancer. Are you guys familiar with that term? No. All right. So let's, we're going to talk about that term. So we're going to let you know what that means. Castrate, you, we use the term castrate still because up until the 1980s, 1990s, when we gave hormone therapy, which means we're taking away a man's testosterone, it was physical castration. All right. Now we can do medical castration. People here may be familiar with that. Lupron or Orgovic. There's a whole bunch of we don't, the ways of lowering your testosterone. Isn't so, that what you need it though? Is right. Not every man, most, yeah. So it's only used, we'll get to that in a second, but I'll talk about it right now. Thank you. Yeah. One is we use it when it's metastatic. And that's one of the other words I want to talk about. Metastatic is a, is a fancy word for meaning spread of the cancer outside the organ. So since we're here about talking about prostate cancer, prostate cancer that has spread to the bone is not bone cancer. I hear at least once a week, a patient of mine telling me how their father had prostate cancer, but he died of bone cancer. No, he didn't die of prostate, bone cancer. He died of metastatic prostate cancer. Does that mean? So that's what metastatic means. So um, castrate resistant means, we're back to go to castrate resistant, means it's resistant to the hormone therapy. All right, so, All right. so we don't use the term refractory. We use the term resistant in prostate cancer. So we did stage, we did grade, we did resistant and we did metastatic. All right, so this is a confusing slide. I'm gonna skip that. You've been diagnosed. There's a few treatment options. Active surveillance, usually used for Gleason 6 disease, low grade cancer. Sometimes we use it for, depending on age and health of the patient for other grades, but usually it's Gleason 6. I might ask you if yep. uh, on Gleason 6, is there a, a PSA level? That... Nope, not related at all. Yep. So PSA, I can take a digression to PSA if you want me to. It was a little two minute. My my opinion. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, please. Opinion, all right. I think PSA is a really good test, but, but it has to use, but the, your doctor has to use their brain. I'm being honest, right? And that is a rare skill. 
in the United States right now, right? Not just in positions, but for any part of this country. Uh, you can't just look at a piece of paper and say your PSA is three, you're fine. If you're a 45, if it's your, if it's your 45 year old son and his PSA is three, his doctor might say it's fine because it's quote under four. No, that's not fine for 45. It, so someone has to actually think, all right? And so someone's PSA has been seven and it's been seven their whole lives, like 45 when you know they've been biopsied and then they see another doctor, they freak out. Oh my God, it's above four. Yeah, but it's been stable. So it's okay, right? So it, it, is, it is a useful piece of information if you use common sense around it, if that makes sense. Do doctors and, utilize that as the main form of, of screening? Yep. It's also a, used to do that. Yeah, I think so. If you, you, you use, use it with, I look at you, I'm not, I'm just saying pretend you're an 80 year old gentleman whose PSA is five. I have no idea how old you are. Right. And you're coming to see me the first time and you don't have prostate cancer. Well, I would probably say PSA of five and an 80 year old is okay. But if you told me your PSA was three last year, then that five becomes a lot more concerning. How do, <laughs> does, that, does that, so you have to look at not just the absolute I'm, value, but also what it's been doing. So I've been telling, we do stuff out in the public. We tell people, find your PSA, chart it, yes. keep track of yes. it. Don't depend on your doctor. Yes, you never your depend on your doctor for anything. How can that be that we don't depend on our doctor? Because who cares more about your health, me or you? Me. There you go. <laughs> That's why. I mean, like, so in anything but, in life, right? If right. you want something done, like if you're, like if I wanted my house painted, if I did myself, I would do a way better job than anyone I pay. No one's going to care more about you than you. Yeah. But but we've been so flea trained that you go to the doctor and he prescribes the remedy and you do the remedy. I mean, you know. I think COVID's changed that. I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're trust in the way you're yeah. saying. And, 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 and maybe and, he's wrong. Maybe he's had right. a bad day. Yeah. He's hung over, man. Well, we, <laughs> never happened to we me. We were talking about, <laughs> last month we were talking about mental health and we were talking about um, the sort of the same subject. And it was like, through your whole life, you would go to the doctor and they would just like tell you what the answer was. But with mm -hmm. prostate cancer, we go and they're like, they're like, these are the, all the options. Like well, it's you not don't just, get told the answer. Uh, it's not right. It's not just prostate cancer. Almost most things are like that. It's just, um, but prostate cancer in particular, especially when you're talking about treatment decisions. Um, I usually tell patients if they're going between surgery and radiation, like I say, I'm like the waiter, and here's the menu. Neither of those options are better than the other. There's pros and cons with each one, hmm. right? So there's not are a best option. Two options. No, there's focal therapy and there's watching it and there's multiple different types of radiation and <laughs> there's a whole decision bush. It's not a tree. Is it better just to get it cut out then? No, not for everybody. It is. For an individual, they may prioritize that, that the best, you know, depending on the grade and stage, uh, surgery plus radiation probably has a better cure rate than uh, radiation alone, but you're also talking about much more side effects. So yeah. some individual products prioritize the side effects and some individuals prioritize, they don't care. They just want this thing out. Like, so it's not a right answer. It's a, it's an individual well, I mean, answer. It, it, I think it is. If you look at it from the, at the final result, everyone's you, final results different. Well, but I mean, if it's out, it's gone at that point, isn't it? If it hasn't spread is then you're not going to have to deal with it ever again. Not true, but I'll talk to you that in a second. 30% of men, what's well, another slide coming up, will have a reoccurrence. But yeah. the thing of, no matter got, what your treatment is. I had mine is. out and I had a reoccurrence. Yeah. My dad had his out and he had a reoccurrence. But the thing that got me. Stop that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that got me <laughs> when <laughs> I went through mine was that the focus was the quality of life after. That's it. And so the quality of life That's a big... with surgery is a lot worse than. Mm -hmm. some of the other treatments. right and but if with radio have the same don't you have the same side effects anyway i mean you still can't you know produce mm -hmm. uh yeah semen I mean, yeah, yeah look no matter what you choose you're gonna have a dry orgasm if that's yeah. what you mean yes but if you're talking about leaking or erectile right. dysfunction or true. urinary issues they're all a little different you give I me mean, there's no right answer meaning if i do surgery you're gonna leak potentially forever maybe not it's sort of random-ish the older you are the higher chance you're gonna leak for longer that's a big deal for a lot of guys. I know it'd be a big deal for me, but if it comes back, you can do radiation. If it's come back locally, if you do radiation, 
you might not have the side effects, but if it comes back, you're, there's not a lot, there's no good option, right? Mm -hmm. So again, there's not, there's no, there's not one answer. Um, it, it, and if you're going to a doctor who's giving you a specific path, especially early on the disease, and is they usually have a financial interest, financial interest, why they're steering you down that path. Mm. Just being honest. Oh, no, I'm, hey man, uh, I'm, usually, I, not always. I mean, I'm not saying because I'm. No, definitely... I appreciate your open. Yeah, because yeah. this is really refreshing. Yeah, well, really refreshing. Thank you. No problem. All right, so surgery, uh, radiation, hormone therapy. We talked about that. Androgen deprivation therapy. Uh, chemotherapy is not really used a lot. Usually, immunotherapy, Provenge. We're going to talk about that. Um, and this is the slide I was about to tell you about, Brian. Yeah, no matter if you take all comers, all stages, all grades, you give them surgery or radiation. In general, about 20 to 30 percent of them in their lifetime, their, their cancer will come back. Doesn't matter. Like now, the higher grade, the worse it was at initial treatment, the higher this number is. The lower the lower the grade, the lower the less cancer, the less chance. But if you just take everyone with prostate cancer. Everyone who's got surgery, everyone who's gotten radiation, about a third of them will reoccur at some point in their life. Now, you're, what you were thinking is correct. If you take the prostate out and you get it all out, it's not going to come back. And that is a true statement. But that doesn't always happen. <laughs> Does that make See, sense? That, 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 <laughs> that's the reality. Right. Percentage, yeah. Everybody's different. Right. I understand. Yeah. It won't come back in your prostate. Yeah. It will come back somewhere else. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, it, no, so if you, you get it all, it's never going to come back. If it has already spread somewhere and that yeah. can take a long time, then it can back. Can it come? Can it, the pathologist think you've gotten all, but there's still a little bit left down in the prostate area? That can happen too. How can you correct? I mean, is it, is it the individual, the doctor himself that determines? I mean, you're getting, let's say, if you get radiation, you do the treatment, all this, he's having a bad day. I mean, I know it's all calculated and I uh, yeah, for the radiation it's less. I think they just press a button. Do what? I think they just press a button. So it's just all computer. I mean, they I think they I'm not a radiation oncologist, but I think they at some right before before your treatment starts, they contour where they want the radiation yeah, exactly. to go. Yeah, they, and then every day they just press go. Yeah, at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. what if they don't? I mean, it doesn't always work. The radiation doesn't no. always work. They don't always pinpoint it. They can the pinpoint exact... it perfectly, and, and the cancer can be resistant. Well, I hate it when it happens. So. I know. That's yeah. a bummer. Yeah. You're, just like, if you, take, just like if you take the, the prostate out, it can reoccur locally. Now right? I have a lot so. of questions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I like I don't, Thank you. I, I, I like I, you I, asking I questions. <laughs> the only difference you picked the right meaning to join I'm us. not going to drink now, because if I drink my drink, I'm going to have my prostate. I can't be with this shit. And so I, I can't drink now. That's now everyone here should thank Brian because now I don't have to call on you because he's asking questions. <laughs> well, man, I mean, I don't trust any of these doctors, to be quite honest, sir. Neither do I. I'm a doctor. They're, they're nuts. I go there and I, I see. Well, I mean, look, I look, uh, that's a generalized statement. Like, oh, but, I mean, it's the reality. Uh, yes and no. Mo the, the thing you need to know is most doctors have your best interest in mind. They do, but they Doesn't... have other things in their world going on at, that, at any given point in time. Yes, of course. Like I mean, human, they, like they everyone else. Over and they see you early. Don't even have to be hung over. Just, we're just people are human like every, like every, they yeah. just got their girlfriend or one of the nurses pregnant, man. They're not there. <laughs> just, well, I'm, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. They're professional, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my, but, my problem is it's kind of like, if the guys kind of basically uh, come up in the surgical side of things, well, he specializes he's gonna, in right. he specializes in surgery. He's going to cut a guy that's mm -hmm. you know kind of more yep. on the radiation. He's going to recommend radiation because that's what he knows. That, yeah, like well, yeah, to both that, those that, guys, they send him to both those guys, and they both give you a sales pitch like they're used car salesmen. That is true too. It's amazing. Yeah, that's what's the and then they're in competition with the, with another somebody else mm -hmm. that's doing that well we're doing this because we're doing this and we do it a lot more than they do what the i don't want to hear that i want to know that your shit's together person mm -hmm. that you're a pro that well, that some doctor is really not worrying about that and has their interest not getting another dollar sign i don't even know if i have cancer or not yeah let's Although be real i, I mean say, i feel great 
Yeah. I yeah. walk seven miles three days a week, sometimes two, mm -hmm. work out two, three days a week. I'm feeling good. So I don't get it. How recent is your prognosis? Uh, a couple of months. Okay, so you're just at the front end of this. Oh yeah, so, yeah, I have many. Okay, so um, Maybe I hear that June, all the time from patients. I feel fine. Yeah, I, I know. I know. So I have I have close friends that have. Come Tom will tell us you will feel there. fine till it's too late. <laughs> Not joking. Yeah. No, that's that's reality. I know that. And I, the treatments are the only thing we feel. Submission and telling me that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you will feel fine until it spreads. You know. Until, well, you and will feel 100% fine until it is spread throughout your body and has gotten so big throughout your body it's actually causing symptoms like either losing weight or bone pain. Yeah. Until then, you'll feel fine. At that point, there's no cure. We can put it into remission and try to like use something like Provenge and other things, but there's no cure at that point, like zero. Does anyone have an uh, idea from when you in first the chat, get diagnosed, diagnosed with it, uh, how many... I, I, it's, again, it's all individual. Okay. How fast it would spread, or even how close it is, you know. It's so I, high. High. High Gleason scores are going to grow quick. Low Gleason scores are going to grow slow. Gleason score is all I've known about so far. It's just PSAs and and Gleason biopsies. And well, ask you. You need to ask MRI. your doctor what what your Gleason score is. That's one of the things you definitely need to know. Yeah. I think I'm sure yeah. most people here know what their Gleason scores yeah. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would it explain? Six, what? seven, eight, nine, ten. Mine's a six. I saw a six point. Good. Okay. They gave me a piece. Of Not paper. a six point something. That would be a PSA. No, no, no. The, sorry, sir. This was this was the biopsy. Three plus so, three equals six. Okay, so I, I never seen a six. I, I just, it would say I it probably would say three plus three equals six is what it would say. Yeah. All right, anyway, we're gonna move on. Yeah. Let's, yeah let's, All right. Let so. Um, all right. So my whole point is get your PSA tests for the, mm -hmm. the people who have had treatments, get your PSAs mm -hmm. test for the rest of your life. You haven't gotten treatment yet, but no matter where you are, if you've gotten treatment 10 years ago and you're your prostate out and your PSA is undetectable, you should be at least getting a PSA every year for the rest of your life. Every year. okay. At least. No, but that's the minimum. If you have had castrate resistant prostate cancer, you should be probably getting a minimum every three months. That would be the minimum plus a testosterone, plus regular imaging. So there is no one size fits all like anything in life, mm -hmm. right? All right, so skip that, skip that, skip that. All right, so that's the summary about prostate cancer. Any questions? All right, we're gonna move on to the next thing, the immune system. I'm not gonna use these slides for this because okay. they can see me, right? I, I can I can make them see you. Okay. All right, stop, share. Because, yeah. Now they get a seat. Uh, we'll go I back to slides in a second. Me. Yeah. Look Everyone's looking at themselves. Hold on, let me pin one. him. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Hold on. Thanks. Let me pin. Yeah. I'm seeing Steve, but there's a okay. box in the okay. no. no. What's the see, Steve? No, hold on. I gotta hold on. It's not pinned. I see you. I see you. Yeah. Pin. It's not called pin. All right. I know, right? We're we're teamed up here. Yeah. Team two, Nate. two okay. for one. Yeah. <laughs> um the spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. The spotlight. Yeah. There we go. To hear others, please join audio. Just do Wi-Fi. Can you no, guys no, hear no, me? Do not. No, do not. No audio? No audio. Yeah, you're... You guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the reason I said, because the slides are confusing. The immune, we're just going to talk about the immune system. All right. So immunotherapy, like Provenge, uses your immune system. All right. It activates your immune system to fight the cancer. The question is what your immune system is. This is my job's easier because of COVID. People have an idea sort of what their immune system is after COVID when before they didn't. I like to simplify things, make things easy because the immune system is ridiculously complex. Um, beyond no one understands it totally. All right. Think of it as like the army or the, sorry, no, don't think like that. Think of it like the US military, all right, or any military for a country. It's designed to kill bad guys and not kill its own civilians. That's what it does. Just like the U.S. military, there's multiple different branches. Mm -hmm. There's B cells, T cells, antibodies, uh, antigen presenting cells. I mean, there's mm -hmm. tons of different parts of it. Each one's designed to recognize self versus others. Others can be cancer. Others can be a virus. Others can be bacteria. That's it. That's all the immune system's designed to do. Speaker. No. For a cancer to develop, it has to evade the immune system. Okay. 
Um, I don't even have to use the slides for the rest. I can just talk. All right. <laughs> um, okay. yeah. for, can uh, for cancer to develop, it has to invade the immune system. All right. So it can do that a few different ways. It doesn't matter, but it has to be. We know that if your immune system is weak, cancer rates go up dramatically. So there's a slide. You don't need mm. to see it. People who have had transplants. Okay. So kidney transplants, for example. People think the idea that it was so amazing that someone could actually take a, ki a kidney out and sew it into someone else. So that's easy. I could show anyone here how to do that. That's not the hard part. The hard part is to make the your military uh -huh. accept, <laughs> accept it. it. Okay, that's the whole part of transplants, right? So, but to accept it, you have to basically stop passing military funding bills, all right? <laughs> so you 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 camp you you tap down the immune system, and then it will accept the that that thing but if you tap down the immune system guess what cancer rates in those patients go sky go way higher upward some of the cancer rates are 15 times higher than the normal population so having a strong immune system is really important one to prevent cancer from growing 10 cells in your thigh get killed by your immune system all right or the having cancer that you have not continuing to grow okay so provenge we'll get to in a second is designed to on like take the mask off the immune system so it can see cancer. All right. Um, any questions about the immune system? I mean, it's very complex. You just need to understand it's self versus others. Any any basic steps or things that you can do to that's a great question. Boosted? I use I say I usually yes. You reminded me I was supposed to talk about that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So one of the things, so my three, you somebody showed up late. One of my three things I want to talk about today was empower yourself, immune system, and provenge. So that goes to empowering yourself, right? So one of the things that you can do, because no one cares about your health more than you, mm -hmm. is um, get your immune system as strong as possible. So how do you do that? I Again, I try to keep things simple. Don't smoke. Smoke is probably one of the worst things you can do. Don't smoke. <laughs> Cigar <laughs> in general. I think that counts. I'm also, <laughs> in the I'm I'm also like a, I'm also a, you know, crack, you know, if you're smoking a cigar a week, it's not going to make a difference. I, I can't imagine that's that much work oh, you than just just reading the done. air that we live in. All right. So, um, I'm in, I'm, sign me up. But if you're, He'll if never you're, like, that if you're like in a smoky room every night for hours at a time, then that's a separate, but you know, anything in my, uh, eat right. So what does eat right mean? There's no magic diet, right? You know, there's no magic diet because there's a million diet fads out there. And if there was one correct one, there'd only be one, right? So there's eat right is simple. Processed foods are bad. Every uh oh, someone made this great comment. And actually, I I thought it was amazing. Pretty much everything in the center of a supermarket is crap. Because what's on the outside, like the meats, the, the dairy, the produce, and the, the produce, produce, right? Yeah. <laughs> everything in the center is crap. That should be limited, all right? Because that's most that's where the processed foods are. Processed foods are bad. Sugar is bad. There you go. <laughs> now, what about exercise? Exercise is important for both your physical health and your mental health. Right. Very important. You know, does it affect humans your, or bet are meant to what? Like, your immune system, though. Everything. everything. So humans, uh, think about this. I always try to think. Well, what what should I? I was thinking about like well. Humans were designed through evolution over millions of years in what conditions? Not sitting in this chair in front of a computer all day, right? Mm -hmm. We're hunter gatherers. We move. We're, we're, our body is meant to move constantly, and the modern society is the first time in history in the last few hundred years where we we can actually have the luxury to sit here and do nothing, right? And so that's what most of us do, right? So. I'm not saying I don't either. So I exercise is really important. To be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, right. So it's movement is incredibly part. The more healthier everything is, the healthier immune system is going to be. So processed food, sugar, smoking, those are the big things. Sugar. And again, exercise, alcohol, in moderation. The more you drink, the it's been shown. Like I, remember, they used to say two drinks a day actually live longer. That's actually been shown not to be true. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this. It's, it's probably individual. I have this little Garmin watch. It tells me my stress level. and tells me how I've like slept. If I have more than a glass of wine, I sleep like shit. Mm -hmm. I, I, this, even if I don't sometimes feel, I can see it, this was showing my stress levels higher. Da, da, da. Sleep's important, like really important. So um, moderation. 
moderation and everything. All right, so that's your immune system, all right? Cancer is developed because it hides from your immune system. Um, it either can overpower it or it can hide from it. Prostate cancer is really good at hiding. All right, so Provenge is designed to um, uh, uh, sort of unmask, unmask uh, pro uh, prostate cancer from the immune system. So immunotherapy, you guys probably have heard this. It's sort of a buzzword, right? Immunotherapy, there's multiple different ways to do it. A lot of immunotherapies basically just boost up your immune system. They're not specific to a disease process, meaning they just make your immune system stronger. If you make your immune system stronger, that's usually associated with autoimmune diseases, right? So that's what an autoimmune disease is. An autoimmune disease is when your immune system thinks part of you is bad. So a dermatitis or a Crohn's disease or lupus or even type 1 diabetes often is your immune system attacks your pancreas, right? So those are all autoimmune diseases. Um, so if you just generally boost your immune system, that's not always good. Provenge is not. Provenge is very specific to saying this is shows wanted posters. This is your enemy. Go find this thing only. <laughs> okay. So how does it do that? Um, there's a bunch of slides in here showing that it works. I guess I'll just do that from memory. <laughs> It's been around since 2010, about 40,000, 50,000 men have been, uh, have, have gotten it. So this is not some new experimental treatment, right? It got FDA approved in 2010. Um, this is the, this is Provenge. 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 Oh, Provenge. Yeah, I have that. P-R-O-V-E-N-G-E. -E. Yeah. Should be in there. Okay. Yep. Because yeah. this is. This no, Dendrion's the company. Okay. Oh, there it is. See right there. Oh, okay. There it is. Yep. P-R-O-V. Okay. Yep. So Provenge is, um, all right, I have to remember where I was, sorry. Um, uh, all right, so Provenge unmasks. it's Provenge designed to, to uh, use your immune cell, oh, sorry, I was going back to how it works. Uh, for, uh, how many people have gotten? 40,000 men have gotten it. Uh, the original study showed that men who got it live significantly longer than men who did not. And since then, there's been multiple other studies showing that the earlier you give it, I could actually show these slides if you want. Yeah, it I, makes I, a super difference. interested. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. And then there's a slide here about African American. It works way better in African Americans than whites. Oh, yeah. like way better. <laughs> oh, okay. I, oh, I'm super, super curious. Super curious about. All right. So. Back up. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. So. Different divisions, and this is not even all of them. This is just some of them. And all right, this is showing the cancer. Increases if we all right, here we go. Do 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 all right. It's been around since 2010. 40,000 men have gotten it. Um real wood studies. Oops, right here. This is the original study that was um published in 09. Or was it in 10? It probably was published in 09. Right. Got FDA approved in 10. So when you think about that, that means the people who um, were in this study were somewhere around 2004 to 2008 to get this data. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you go back 15, 20 years ago, there was almost no treatments available for metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer, unlike today where there's a ridiculous amount. And so you, these, you see these numbers here, you're like, whoa, <laughs> they're not very long. This is average life expectancy yeah, with yeah. the drug or without the drug. The numbers are much higher now. Okay. Wow. Um, but this is going back what it was like mm -hmm. if, if you were had met metastatic cash rate resistant prostate cancer and it was in 2005. This is sort of your outcome. Okay. Um, but you live significantly longer if you got the drug. Um, it's been shown in this study and in multiple other studies that the earlier you give it, the longer you live. All right, so on the left-hand side is showing men whose PSA was lower and they lived more than a year longer than getting it versus not getting it. On the right-hand side are men whose PSAs are much higher and the, and, the, and the difference between getting it and not getting it is not as much. Earlier is better. Be an advocate for yourself. <laughs> Make sure you go to your doctor's appointments and get your PSAs checked. This is another study showing earlier is the better. All right, and you can see the numbers here mm -hmm. are way higher, right? When so, was this you know, study? Forty-seven months. Yeah, now we're. Does that make sense? <laughs> what what yeah. is what is the timeline on this study? 
What do you mean by tie? So like, this, when was this it done? oh, this is real world after it was FDA approved. Okay. And this was uh published in 19. So probably like 2012 to 2016, 17, 18, somewhere around there. Does I that think make sense? That's about the range. Yeah. We had a doctor come and talked about Provenge, and he was basically like, if my wife wouldn't get divorced me and I had prostate cancer, I would get this immediately. And we were like, and I've been like, so I was talking to Nate. I like, like so, and there was, the water, and there was more studies. There was more studies. <laughs> and I'm like, I wanted to hear about the studies, you know, as it's progressed over. No, here. so it, it um, multiple studies that show it works. The earlier you give it, the better. I haven't really talked about the side effects and stuff like. We'll get to that, but it's incredibly well tolerated. It only takes a month to get it. One month and you're done. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, my dad does not. At, yet have castrate resistant prostate cancer he's one of the lucky ones he's been on hormone therapy for over 10 years and he hasn't become castrate resistant which is on the outside edge of normal like it's that, that's not normal um he's been lucky but if we were we had the financial means where a few hundred thousand dollars didn't mean a lot i would give it to him and like now mm -hmm. he doesn't qualify yet so it's really uh, it's just a matter of the the money like so no 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 it's my Oh, you saying why? Why? Yeah, because like if like well, if, everything. I think what was my first statement. Everything comes down to money. But yeah. it, it does For me, it doesn't. The only reason I'm doing this is to help these people. Right. I do not right. care about anybody's no, money. Care. It's someone else's. It's not mine. And so if if there is a treatment that would make my friend Rob get an extra ten years, I want to freak. But there's out also what it no is. data that it that it. There's no. It's there's never no, been studied. Yes. There's no data that if you're giving it or though there is, is that ever going to come out? I, it might. It might. Yeah. There's, they did study with men on active surveillance. So, you know, men who, who actually were just watching it. Okay. But that data may take a it's really, really long. Within the next 18 months. Because you would think it would take, to show a difference would take a long time. Because so there are some like active surveillance that are taking ProVenge that aren't, they're not castration. On a study. Correct. Yeah, that it's not even it's not fascinating. Even, it's not even metastatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because like that's kind of me. I'm like, okay, so should I get the thing? Well, you'd be paying around two hundred grand. Yeah. Well, <laughs> time is a value. Yeah. Um. If you didn't qualify. For it. If you didn't qualify for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's if you're yeah. And and I think the only people who do that usually are to go off subject a little bit. I think people from. Uh, um, Canada come down here to get it and they'll pay cash because it's hard to get in Canada in a socialized medicine system. So socialized medicine, there's my little political statement is, is really good for you when you're not sick. Anyway. Um, um, all right. So earlier, the better. And this is what I was saying for African-American patients it's significantly better. So this is actually one of the registry studies. So this is real life data. This is, wasn't the original. Data. So this is more data like about, you know, 10 ish, eight, five to 10 years ago data. Um, um, what you see on the left-hand side are people whose PSA was under 30 and all comers, 33 months. If you're African-American, 54 months. Wow. Same patient population. On the right-hand side, you see, again, later is worse. If your PSA was over 30, the difference wasn't as much. And you can see how much lower both numbers were. Um, and this is another example of Provenge with other drugs. I don't know where everyone is on their disease process on this call, but some a lot of the newer drugs that are available in the, over the last 10 years that were not available to the men in the original study, Extandi, Abiraterone, Erlita, um, Dartulamide, these are drugs, they're oral drugs that in different ways lower testosterone. Even if you're on these drugs, giving test, you know, so on the left are people on these drugs who got Provenge, on the right people on these drugs who did not get Provenge. All right, so multiple things show at work. Um, and let's talk about how it works. All right. So how do you get your immune system to show your immune system a wanted poster? It's not a pill. His can't be yours, right? It has to be different because the immune system is very individual to every individual person. So um, uh, you have to take your immune system and bring it to a lab. All right. So the treatment overview takes one month. Uh, there's three infusions. And they're two weeks apart. So time zero, two weeks later, and two weeks later. So in four weeks, you're done. All right. 
each block, those three blocks, require two visits. One is to take your blood and one is to give it back. All right. So first thing is called leukophoresis, fancy medical term, leuko white, phoresis, take out. All right. So it takes out some of your white blood cells. We probably all know that white blood cells are in your in your blood are the are your immune system blood. Yeah. There's multiple different types of white blood cells. Take some of your white blood cells out, less than 1%. So you're not going to be immune compromised. All right. The leukophoresis, being very honest, is probably the worst, they would probably admit, is probably the worst part of the treatment. So it's not even part of the treatment, just getting your blood. Because most patients will have to sit here for about three hours like this. So it's sort of like dialysis. Uh, you have an IV in one arm, an IV in another arm. One goes out, goes into a machine, and then the other one comes back in. Uh, some people, their veins aren't good, and they'll have to have uh, a port. It's a fancy word. Uh, so interventional radiology puts something into their veins, a, a bigger vein. Mm -hmm. And that's actually not, there's pros and cons with that, like everything. The pros are you don't have to sit still <laughs> for three hours. It, uh, the cons are it's something that can get, it's a procedure and something can be infected. Okay. So we usually don't like to do it if your veins are good. All right. If your veins are bad, then you, you usually get it. So that's leukophoresis. You'll go into that three times. So that's just like going to the community blood center down the street. Literally around the corner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's doing the phoresis. Uh, like plasma phoresis. Plasma. Or yeah. platelets. Or yes, that's exactly but, what it's like. It yes, it's exactly. Yeah. What and those are usually done, depending where you are, at a blood bank like center so it depends on the i don't it's know community blood centers but is that what is that where it is here yeah, okay it's so like in our for our office i think we have it in in one of our offices every location is different but it's usually like a blood bank center okay. it's exactly what it's like um so that's the first part then there's a cool part uh, and i wish there were slides i've told them to like i think this is the me of the talk and there's no slides about it the cool part is they take these slides and in my new york version of this is they piss them off against prostate cancer all right, there's fancy ways how they do it, but basically they show them prostate cancer, they give them a bunch of things called cytokines, these fancy things that rev, rev up your immune system. So now your immune system's activated, you know, because your immune system is constantly activated, that's how autoimmune disease happens, right? So your immune system is usually not activated. So it activates your immune system and shows them prostate cancer. So now these cells know what prostate cancer looks like, and they're like, like the Denver Broncos about to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, okay? <laughs> and so, oh God, they're Look playing. I was, yeah. I was looking for a reason to put that in there. <laughs> and um, so they're all they're all pumped up, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they get couriered, literally couriered, back to your doctor's office. There is a finite window of how long they last. You need to show up during that time. The plane's delayed. You may not get it. They might have to make you a new one. Um, and you sit there over an hour and they infuse them back into you. And that's it. Now, is this done locally, say in Kansas City, or do you have to go to a Denver, or New York? No, no, Chicago? Kansas City. Okay. Every major metropolitan area has this in the country. Okay. Um, I didn't know where your cells are shipped to. Our cells are shipped to California. Your uh, your cells are shipped to um, Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. There's two in the country? Two. There's, so there's two of these facilities in the country. It's expensive. Because it's not a pill that can just be like, uh -huh. this is specifically made for you. And, and I don't even understand half of it. If Nate wants to talk, like there are so many quality controls they have to go through before they're put on a plane back to see you. Is there any evidence of infection? Are they activated enough? Is there, I mean, there's all these quality controls that have to go on to make sure that they're safe and effective to be put back into you. Has it been sent that too? Atlanta. Atlanta. Has it Atlanta. changed over the years? Is like if you had it now, would it be different than if you had it ten years ago? The process is the exact same. It's the same antigen. All of that is consistent. Okay. How we treat it is different. Yeah. And the other treatments that are available is what's different. One of the things a major difference is we say how we treat it is would be the original study. Some of the reason you saw that was a twenty-two month, twenty-four whatever a month survival. The average PSA was like one hundred and ten people in that in that in that um, study. Why would it be so high? No one waits to change treatments to when your PSA is 110. You, I'm changing treatments when PSAs go from zero to 0.5, okay? <laughs> um, like, why would you wait? Because back then, there was nothing to do except watch your PSA go up. Yeah. <laughs> really, there was chemotherapy, which doesn't do very well and takes it makes you, you know, it's toxic. So that was usually only safe for people who are incredibly symptomatic, and that was it. So- Earlier, we give it way early. I 
I would say the average person that I personally infuse with PSA has uh, with, for, with ProVenge probably has a PSA under one. I see their PSA zero, 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 point one, point two, point three. They're getting P, they're getting PSA. Let me start thinking pro Yeah. I mean, it's going up. Why am I waiting it to go up higher? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the big difference that has changed. How it's made so, but, is <laughs> castration resistant, though. Right. So how does it who qualifies? Oh, first of all, before I get to that. Yeah, I want to know that. Before I get to that. Um, side effects is very well tolerated. Okay, so it's your own cells. And but remember, you're when you get the flu, COVID, cold, that's your the, the in general, it's not the the virus or the bacteria that's making you feel ill. It's usually your immune mm -hmm. system's response to it. So having mild flu-like symptoms is not uncommon. The only good news is if it happens to you, you know your immune system's all revved up. If it doesn't happen to you, which a lot of people literally feel nothing, doesn't mean it's not working. All right, so um, rare in the study, about one to 2% of people didn't get all three um, uh, treatments for a variety of reasons. I can't think of one person out of the hundreds we probably, because I started doing this in 2012-ish. I can't think of one person who didn't get three. I have had one person recently who had a tough time. He got pretty like ill for a few of them, but that's out of the hundreds. That's out of hundreds of like, all right. So in general, it's incredibly well tolerated. Three doses in one month, you're done, and then you can go on to something else. What you do need to know, though, is P it, PSA in their package insert. So every drug, I don't know if you've ever looked when you get a drug, has like this piece of paper that's in like six font type, and it's a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff in it. In there, it says you shouldn't be checking PSA afterwards because, but everyone does. Like, 100% everyone does. <laughs> PSA may not respond, often does not respond. You, it's not It's not a cytotox. So one of the things the immune system can do is it can wipe out, it's, um, just kill all the cancer. ProVenge is not going to have it do that. I don't know if there's any evidence ever in the 40,000 plus patients of what's called a complete response, meaning you give a drug and the cancer has gone. That never happens. Um, but it can also cause cancer to grow uh, more slow. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so that's how we think it happens. So that's why it would make sense. The earlier you give it, the better. And I wish they had this slide. They don't have this slide. So I'll try to use my hands. If the cancer is growing, 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 at some point, there's too much cancer and you die. Okay. So there's a, like a, there's a velocity to how it's growing. If I, we think an immunotherapy works by just changing the slope. All right. If we do it late, like when you're up here, there's not much room. There's almost no room. And that corresponds to sort of the data, right? If yeah. you the higher the PSA, if you do it earlier, there's a ton of room. It can make a huge difference. Does that make sense? So yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, for the vast majority of people, that's what it does. It just changes mm -hmm. the slope. Okay. Um, so, so that PSA is patient specific anxiety, right? So everyone's worried about their PSA. How come it's not going down? <laughs> so that's why I just want to mention that. So uh, who qualifies? Any questions about how it's given, produced, side effects, anything like that? Okay. So side effects are minimal. For like vast, there. vast, vast majority of people, side effects are min Maybe minimal. Flu -like symptoms. Yes. But if it's not, it's kind of sucked. I can only think of one person who it sucked for in hundreds. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when we say the uh, side effects, is that sort of a one and done, your body yes. getting used to it? A day or two and you're done. Okay. Yeah. It's not like a continuing. No. It is okay. no, it's yeah, great question. So it's not like yes, some drugs have side effects that you know, Why, for like for example, like chemo, um, you can have uh, neuropathy, uh, mm -hmm. so you lose feeling your toes or your your like, that's that's often permanent. <laughs> that side effect, so it's nothing like that. Okay. Um, all right. So who qualifies? You have to have metastatic. Remember that word, meaning spread of the cancer. Castrate resistant means it's growing despite your testosterone being low. Okay, um, prostate cancer. How you get there? That's what this slide is supposed to show. There's multiple ways you can get there. Okay, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get have it has ever spread. You're on hormone therapy and it's growing. You qualify unless you're very sick. Like if you're in a wheelchair or bed bound, your immune system is probably pretty crappy already. It's not going to do much. So those people can't get it. 
or if you're symptomatic, meaning your bone pain is so hard, because you're not, it's so bad that you have to take narcotics. So if you're on narcotics for your bone pain, you can't qualify. All right. Otherwise, you qualify. Um, oh, you want to take a picture of that? Hold up. There you go. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So it's expensive, like every drug out there. <laughs> um, and I can't think of a drug that's not expensive anymore um to me this sort of seems like it makes sense why it's expensive when you understand it's not a pill um you know because when you think of a like for example like standy which someone here may be on i don't know um if, for prostate cancer is about fourteen thousand dollars a month yeah, and it's a pill done. it's a pill so how much does it cost to make that pill can't cost more than probably a hundred dollars, right? And so uh, you put into all the uses, yeah. You know, that's it's how they make right, exactly. But unlike Provenge, where it had you're curing your own your own blood. I mean, it's 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 a completely different beast, right? And so um obviously Dendrion, the company that makes it, is not gonna pay me, Tom, pay for this, uh, for you to get a for you to have a drug hear about a drug that you can't get. I'm not gonna <laughs> right. So if you qualify, I can't think of one patient for financial reasons who have not been able to qualify, right? Your insurance, as we all know, can say, yes, we approve it. You have a $10,000 deductible and they do stupid crap like that constantly. Yeah. Um, but there are funding sources out there and I'm sure maybe some of them have even been to this. I don't know if well, been to this or not. My buddy, he's, he got funding. Yeah, so, so funding, I, there's I a whole surprised. industry of funding to help people um exactly. afford it so i i can't think of one person that we've wanted to get on it who can't get it okay um oh yeah so this last thing right here um so if you have if anyone on this call knows someone or has metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer uh, and has not been told about this they should probably ask their physician and if their physician poo poos it you should probably go get a second opinion. That's my professional advice. I'm, I haven't. That's weird. I, they didn't say anything to me about this. It and depends. I'm going it right now at an early stage. Yeah. So. Well, early. You don't qualify. But you don't qualify. No, you oh, okay. There. You're, 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 so you so are. Early, you are way far away yeah, from not, it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're like. Good. You're like that's on. Good a, to know. You're yeah, on like a. Different, different, you don't want. You don't want to be. You're literally on. So to just to review quickly, maybe for you people who are maybe earlier on in the disease process, right? So cancer becomes localized, right? At some point, it'll become uh, metastatic. Then you'll be put on um, hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. And after that is death. There's no, there's nothing worse than that. Like this, that is the end stage of this disease, okay? So if you are just newly diagnosed localized prostate cancer, they will not be talking to you about anything that in, in this right line. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, yeah. guys, I don't even know yeah. who I'm talking with here. I appreciate you laughing. We're all over the map. All of yeah. you. Yeah. Are y'all got prostate cancer too? Or everybody's got prostate cancer, sure. but what what we typically just so so you since you're new, we typically have speakers every other month and then we don't have speakers every other month, so we have more time to go around the room and really talk. But uh -huh. like I'm giving, so much, I'm doing. But there's that. so much great information. We do want to interact. Right? I do. But, I want you to interact. Yeah, man, you're, you're. Yeah, and you're helping me. I, I'm learning some great things. So you got to come back at least twice. Yeah. <laughs> you do it every, yeah, exactly. I promise you will. Yeah. Um, so you do it the first Wednesday of every month. First Wednesday every month, about every other month speaker. So I want to make sure Tom has time twice to talk. So you get a story. Whole His story is great too. So yeah. um, uh, usually I do these talks in a half hour. So it's been like an hour. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, and we have a hard stop it, in a yeah, half that's hour. That's why I'm going to do it in two seconds and Tom needs to go. Um, Get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, be an advocate for yourself. I'll, I'll just skip it. I'll do this in two seconds. Be an advocate for yourself. No one should care. No one should care about your health more than you. Oh. And your doctor's not going to, right? Um, and no one else should be caring about your health more than you. You do that by taking notes, following up with your doctor, and be an advocate for prostate cancer by making sure every first degree relative here that you know of gets their PSA checked. Right.
and that's it. You want to advance those slides a little bit? Yeah, and then, yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, there you go. There you there go. Yeah, hey, right. Tom. Hey, there he is. You the guy. Um, so my name is Tom McKenzie, and um, before I was diagnosed with prostate cancer, I used to think I was Superman. I don't know if y'all had some of that same deal or not. I'm, I'm guessing that, that mm -hmm. you may have, but uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let me tell you just a little bit about myself first. Um, my wife and I met in college. Um, we've been married for 48 years. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful son and a wonderful daughter, both of whom have two children of their own. So that makes us very proud parents, of course, and and very proud grandparents. Um, go ahead and advance that slide one. There's there's my daughter's uh, family is on the left there, and my son's family is on the right. And that's that's Tom and his young bride in the <laughs> mid seventies. He looks like Superman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do. It's to throw you off. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll tell you what else. That yeah, exactly. Seventies is you see that. That what I'm wearing there? That's seventies. Exactly what that is. Is that polyester? Oh, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few. I don't know how many polyesters had to die to make that thing, but uh, <laughs> but that is a white leisure suit. Not I'll tell you what, that was right on brand in the mid seventies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I worked in the pharmaceutical industry actually for twenty seven years. And then I, I moved into the data privacy and security world for another 15 years before I retired in mid-2020. Uh, so that kind of gives you a little bit of background on me. Dendrion is sponsoring me tonight um, uh, or compensating me tonight. But I tell every group that's not why I do these. I do these because I really think that my story um, has got some value to other patients with prostate cancer. It's got value, hopefully, to provide a little bit of perspective on the disease and the treatments, maybe inspire some encouragement, uh, provide a little comfort, provide a little hope, whatever that you know may be. That's why I do these things. They don't pay me enough. <laughs> I assure you, they're not paying me enough for this to be a financial endeavor. But um, well, anyways, Back to the uh, the Superman thing, and I use notes, by the way, and it's primarily just so I don't talk too long because I do have a tendency to do that. Um, so that Superman thing, um, you see, I was one of those guys that was always healthy. I grew up in Southern California. I was a multi-sport athlete. I played football at the University of Colorado. Um, yes, that's where Coach Prime is. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> um, I never yeah. had, and I've always stayed in really pretty good shape. Um, I never had to watch what I ate. If I gained a little bit of weight, I never had any trouble losing that weight. I mean, I could lose weight like that. Um, my wife, of course, hated that. She felt like that was one of life's little injustices. So mm -hmm. I could lose that's weight bad. at the snap <laughs> of a finger. Um, on the rare occasions that, that I would go see a doctor or have blood work done, my numbers were always great. I mean, they just were. That was that was me. I was I was the epitome of health. All of these Superman types of qualities sort of led me to having this understanding with doctors. And that was that that is to say, if I could get up out of bed in the morning, I probably didn't go see a doctor just didn't do it. Well, everything seemed to fall in place for me until about eight years ago when I was diagnosed with advanced prostate cancer. We'll we'll talk a little bit How are you now? about that. I'm now 69. I'll be 70 in uh, May. I was diagnosed at 62. So, and, and we'll talk just about that because my symptoms began back in, in very early 2015 was having what I thought was back pain, lower back pain. After a while, I thought, no, this is too low for even lower back pain. I'm feeling this on the on my pelvic floor. So I thought, 
Yeah, I've got bronchitis. That's what I've got. So I decided I was going to go get an annual physical. But well, annual physical is a misnomer because I hadn't had a physical for 16 years. Oh, you blew it. I did blow it. And, you know, you, you like to live your life thinking you would never do anything over again. I'd do that over again. Mm -hmm. I'd have physicals every year. Yeah. And I, and I would have gotten my PSA checked mm -hmm. at a much earlier age. Yeah, I would have done that differently. That's the only thing in my life I would do differently. But that would have been an important thing. Um, yeah, so I, I went I went to see a doctor. Um, he did all the annual physical type of stuff, you know, the poking, the prodding, the listening. The, um, I had a, a stress test, all the lab tests, you know, that you get during a, during a physical. And he invited me into his office and we we're going to review my, my lab work. And I'm sitting across the desk from him and he's looking at the computer screen and he's going down the numbers and, you know, they're all just perfect Superman, right? They're all just exactly what I expected them to be. All of a sudden he stops and he just looks at the computer screen, doesn't say a word. And he says, this doesn't look right. We're gonna have to have this tested. It can't be fine. It says your PSA is 143. Oh. And we had it retested. PSA was 143. <laughs> yeah. Now, as you can imagine, things started moving pretty quickly yeah. after that. Uh, they scheduled me for a series of scans. I had an MRI. Um, I had a CT scan, I had bone scans, um, I had my biopsy, um, and the diagnosis <laughs> from all of that was indeed metastatic prostate cancer. And as I said, I was 62 years old at that time. Yeah. Um, you know, in addition to my prostate being a mess, uh, the scans showed involvement of my pelvic lymph nodes, both right side and left side, my seminal vesicles. A little portion of the outer lining of my bladder seemed to be involved as well. And I had uh, a suspicious spot on my spine at L4 and on a rib on my left side, uh, left seven. So um, that, that uh, you know, I look back on all that and I think, I wasn't all that devastated. I probably should have been really devastated. But, you know, again, this whole so this Superman kind of thing was like, okay, well, we'll just fight this thing. Um, I know that the urologist that did my, my biopsy was not nearly as optimistic as I was. In fact, I like to tell the story. He, he pulled my wife aside the evening of my biopsy, and he delivered a very dire prognosis to her. Um, he, in fact, was recommending that we get my personal affairs in order. And he started talking to her about things like palliative care and hospice and, you know, stuff like that, which, believe me, is good. That's good stuff. But it was clear that he was talking about the end of the fight when we hadn't even thrown our first punch. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of a fighter, so... Um, I needed to be able to throw a few punches. Um, so anyways, I got hooked up with a really good oncologist. Um, and and my, I can, I'll never forget my first visit to that oncologist. He said, Tom, there are a lot of tools in the toolbox to fight prostate cancer. And there's not a single one of them we can't use on you. Now, this was eight years ago. And the good thing about all of that is there are a lot more tools in that toolbox today than there even were eight years ago. And they keep coming, man. It, I mean, if you got to have prostate cancer, this isn't a bad time to have it uh, because there's a lot of good things that are going on. Now, for me, the first, uh, first tool out of the toolbox was ADT or androgen deprivation therapy hormone therapy. And I don't know if, if any of you are, are on that or anybody on the call is on androgen deprivation therapy. I remember at the time thinking that's a hell of a thing to do Superman. You know, <laughs> you know, kill his, his testosterone. And that's just yeah. right. But 
that that's the standard of care and it's a real important step in this process so you know i went in figuring that's that's you do what you got to do um and you know those those drugs have side effects associated with mm -hmm. as if you're taking them you very well know some of them are very personal side effects sexual side effects libido type side effects some of them are just nagging side effects like like hot flashes um, if you've had okay. those, yeah, I, I see you nodding there. I can, I'll tell you a story. I, uh, the first time I had a hot flash, I was sitting watching television with my wife. I had this huge hot flash comes over. I looked at my wife and I said, oh my God, honey, I'm, I'm having this huge hot flash. My neck was all sweaty and, you know, this and that. And she kind of turns to me, she tilts her head and she smiles and she says, Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned a little bit about the uh, symptoms of menopause that evening. I'll tell you what else I learned. I learned not to, to uh, complain about um, hot flashes in my life. I'm sure. Um, so the next, the next uh, tool out of the toolbox for me, now keep in mind, I had advanced prostate cancer, um, stage four, I had a Gleason score of, of eight, uh, which isn't as bad as it can be, but um, but that's that's not a good Gleason score. Um, my PSA, as as I told you, was through the roof. So the second tool out of the toolbox for me is actually chemotherapy. Now, I could use from now until 8.30 to talk about chemotherapy and the effects that that has. That's yeah. tough stuff. And I'll tell you what, that's um, it's it's a tough road. If I had to do it again, and I may have to do it again, um, I'll do it because again, you you fight the fight and you do what you got to do. Yeah. But um, it's a pretty tough road. I, I'll never forget the, and I like to tell stories too. By the way, I hope that's okay. My first my first chemotherapy session. I'm sitting there and the nurse comes in and she's got a gown on and she's got this box and she sets it up on the counter. And, and I knew that I had the, my bag of chemotherapy in there that they were going to infuse. She proceeds to put on a pair of gloves. As soon as she finishes that, she proceeds to put on a second pair of gloves. And I said, you know, I couldn't help but notice. You put on two pairs of gloves. Why is that? And she says, well, yeah, we're very careful when we handle this stuff because it's really toxic. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, aren't you about to put that in my veins? <laughs> and she just kind of looked at me and her eyes got all big. And, you know, we had uh, maybe a, a slightly awkward moment there, which I, I broke with a smile. And, and we got a, both had a, a little bit of a chuckle out of it. But the truth is that stuff is toxic. Um, and again, I can share lots of stories, and, and um, uh, neuropathy is only one of them. Uh, and there's a lot more that that goes along with that. But it actually helped me. I mean, it it uh, it really beat my PSA way back, and I, and I stayed in really good control until um, late 2017. So what was that? That was about 18 months, a little more than 18 months that it really did control my my uh, PSA and my cancer quite well. But then my PSA started to inch up a little bit. Now, when I had finished with the chemotherapy, my PSA was down near around one. It kind of varied between one and two, it kind of bumped around a little bit. But then all of a sudden it went to 2.5, then it went to three, then it went to 3.5. And at this point I'm being seen every month, you know. Um, and so we're seeing this steady rise, and and my oncologist was smart enough to know that we need to go back to the toolbox. And he actually at that time recommended ProBench. And so that's that's the road that we went down. You know, he he talked about all the things that Dr. Source talked about. That ProBench was personalized immunotherapy. It's made from my own immune cells. Um, which made all the sense in the world. I had done a lot of research on immunotherapies. That really was kind of a big deal back then. It still is. But um, I had done a lot of research, and and this just seemed right to me, the fact that 
we're going to use my own immune cells to fight my cancer. Sounded good to me. Um, it's a personalized approach, which which I really appreciate. Um, I was also encouraged uh, uh, in in the fact that it was intended to extend life, and that's what the data showed. I mean, extending life, that was kind of my goal, mm -hmm. was to extend my life, right? Am I right? Here we are. That's your goal? Duh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so, um, and then also the, the data that showed that the earlier in the, the disease state that you use Provenge, the more likely you are to be a positive responder. Mm -hmm. So with that, we, we talked through how the treatment was going to go. It, it seemed to fit my lifestyle just fine. So um, I said, I'm in, let's, let's do this. Um, so my Provence uh, treatment started. And as Dr. Source talked about, there's, there's three cycles over approximately a month. Each cycle takes a week, got a week off, you're back on, week off, you know, and then you've got your final one. Um, the cell collection phase, which is called leukapheresis, I had mine done at the at the Red Cross. It is exactly like giving uh, platelets right. or you know something like that. Um, you know they've got a, an IV going in one arm or coming from one arm going through the machine. The machine's doing all this magic, puts what it doesn't separate back in your your other arm. And if you've had that done before, you know that those needles are a little larger and they're stiff. They're not those nice mm -hmm. flexible needles. So you do have to sit there really, really still for two to three hours. And I can remember the first time I did that, I, I, I kept thinking, what in the world am I gonna do if my nose starts itching? <laughs> and then right on cue, ah, my nose started itching. There. Yeah. And so I kept the nurse busy, you know, scratching my nose and she, she was, glad to do it i'm sure that wasn't her first priority in that place that day but um you know it was something i needed help with and i knew i couldn't do it so um so anyways once you have your cells extracted it's sent to the the processing center and my taste that was atlanta georgia and there's a lot of magic that goes on there folks i'll, I'll tell you what and um that that came to my mind and my wife's mind when I was going back to my cancer center for my first infusion of Provenge. Um, we were sitting there in the lobby of the cancer center and a delivery guy comes through the front door and he's got this big orange box. If you, if you ever are on Provenge, that's how they deliver it. It comes in a big orange box. And he sets it up on the counter and says, this goes to the fourth floor. And my wife and I looked at that and we knew that my dose of Provenge was in that box. And my wife got a little teary, you know, mm -hmm. with, with all of that. And, and part of that was just the knowledge of what happened those last couple of days from the time they, they took my white blood cells out and now they're back at the, at the uh, infusion center, ready to go back in, into me. There is an amazing amount of stuff that goes on and there's a lot of people involved in it and it's it's kind of overwhelming when you when you think about it but um so that's that's the uh the infusions the infusions were no big deal at all i mean for me they took a, a, you know an hour to two hours to infuse back in me the side effects very manageable i mean during my leukapheresis the day i would have leukapheresis i would get really fatigued and I'd have to go home and I'd have to take a nap. And I'm not a nap kind of guy, but it just really fatigued me. The next day I'd be fine. But it, that day I really had a lot of fatigue. Um, after infusions, you know, I would get a little bit of joint pain, but I'd take some ibuprofen or some Tylenol, that kind of stuff. And that seemed to knock that out. I really didn't have any other side effects. And I know there are side effects. Of, you know, they I've got them listed here. Fever, back pain, nausea, headache. Those are some of the more common side effects. I didn't have any of that. So I would say that I tolerated the product really, really well. Um, I'm really pleased to say that I responded well to it. You know, I look at the, the data that uh, Dr. Source showed and I thought, you know, there you go, Superman. 
you know, I'm I'm a I'm a, a buster of averages because I had Provenge five and a half years ago, and I'm still going strong. Now, I will tell you that I've had some ups and downs in my journey since then. Uh, in fact, I've had um, additional treatments after Provenge. I've had tweaks to my ADT. Uh, I am on enzalutamide or Xandi now. Um, I was uh, in a clinical study for an investigational drug. I have had two rounds of what is called FDRT, which is a high dose, high targeted radiation type therapy. One of those was on a right pelvic lymph node. The other one was right on the prostate itself. Mm. Um, so that's what I've had there. Um, I don't have time to share specifics of all that stuff, but I'm more than happy to talk to you guys afterwards or during Q&A and, and can tell you all about all of that stuff. Uh, but right now, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that my, my uh, cancer is in, in very good control, and I do knock on wood every time I say that. Um, my PSA, uh, in fact, I just had it checked last week. Uh, my PSA is 0 0.05 right now. So, you know, I, I laugh at my golf buddies. I said, look, I'll put my, P my cancer-ridden PSA against your non-cancer PSA any day. <laughs> but, so I'm in pretty good control. Again, knock on wood, as I always do. I play golf two to three days a week. Um, I shoot competitive skeet during the summertime. Um, but most of all, I'm spending time with the people in my life that I love the most, and that's my family and friends. So that's really what it's what it's all about. You know, it's it's as you can guess, things didn't look real good for me eight years ago when I first got diagnosed. Things looked pretty tough, but right now. Um, we're fighting the fight and we're enjoying life and and um, and that's the way we'll keep doing it. I do want to leave you with just a, a few final notes that I have found to be important in this journey. The first one is don't let cancer take over your life. Cancer isn't what who you are, it's what you have. And there is way too much joy to be had in life for, for you to let cancer take that over. So don't let that happen. Don't, don't let the beast get you down. The second thing is advocate for yourself. And that means, to me, that means engage with your doctors. It means find resources. Be a part of groups like this where you can get to know more about your disease and get to know more about the treatments of your disease. Um, just know that you're not alone on this journey not by any stretch. And that's all a part of advocating for yourself. The third thing I, I like to recommend is, is keeping a mind-body approach to your treatment. And for me, that is a daily practice of meditation. For other people, it might be something else. It, it might be mindful breathing. It might be just mindful awareness types of techniques. Um, it could be relaxation techniques. It could be prayer. It's whatever you find that works for you that allows you to get a mind-body type of relationship. The mind and body are inextricably linked, absolutely linked. So find ways that you can work through all of that uh, in a mind-body type of approach. The next thing that I recommend is keep a sense of humor. Really good things happen in your body when you laugh endorphins are released, your immune system is enhanced. Keep a sense of humor, find ways to laugh. My brother's got a saying, he says, you know, it's a long day without a laugh. And I believe that to be true. And so it really is important that you keep a sense of humor in life. Um, yeah, you've got a really serious disease, but don't let it take your sense of humor. Keep that sense of humor. And then finally, Know, know that you're going to have ups and downs. That's part of our journey, guys. You're going to have ups and downs. Don't freak out when you do. And just remember, there's a lot of tools in the toolbox, right? A lot of tools in the toolbox. So, guys, that's my abbreviated story.
Thank you, Tom. I'm yeah. so glad you got your you 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 survived and you're here to share your story. I'm Thank so you. grateful. I appreciate that. Survivor, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nate, for bringing these two great guys here. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you all. We'll. Oh, that's it. We're out of here now. We don't get to party. Where's the dancing girls? I thought this was a <laughs> real men's club. You got, you got, a, you got a t-shirt. You got, you got a t-shirt. What do you want, man? Like <laughs> no. Any questions for Tom? Though we got a couple. Minutes. Yeah, we got a couple minutes. Yeah. yeah. I'd be happy to answer questions. Well, it, it, the whole thing is we were talking about president. That's for you. That was kind of like the first course of action. Right. Did you go through all the the uh, uh, the radiation? Radiation was the that actually was well down the line. My first course of therapy was the androgen deprivation therapy, the ADD. Okay. Well, because your your PSA was so high. Yeah. I was wondering they're not going to just do the normal radiation. Didn't they do something like you? Well, when I when I after the ADT, they didn't even wait. I mean, I started responding to ADT pretty quickly. And, mm -hmm. and that's typical. Your your PSA will start to come down. What is ADT? Androgen deprivation therapy. Yeah, okay, okay, that's right. It's it's yeah, um it's where they knock your testosterone down. Mm -hmm. And so um, well, that's expensive. That's that fourteen thousand no, dollar no, pill. No, no. yeah, that's, that's a Lupron shot. So Lupron or Agovix or Elgar, yeah. Lupron. Right. I take Lupron. Hey man, there's so much I'm confused. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess you will be. Yeah, so a little bit until yeah. you start. Yeah, yeah. and I'm but, sorry that. Yeah, you you got the fire hose tonight, <laughs> like <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, fire yeah, hose. Yeah, there's a toolbox explanation that talks about yeah. a lot of different treatments. Oh, great. And, and then great. the, the other thing that it hasn't been said here tonight, and I would encourage. There isn't a guy that comes in here that won't buy you Starbucks. Like we'll we'll yeah. like so if you want to talk to Rob or me or, or whoever yeah. John, yeah. um we can I get hot chocolate? I don't drink chocolate. I don't drink. <laughs> I'm iced tea too. So yeah, they're not gonna let you get a caramel macchiato. And, and, you know, no. and if you made it, sugar. if you what made it to this meeting, meeting healthy, you you have my iPhone. Straight coffee. So espresso. Exactly. Yeah, well, I, you know what? I appreciate that. Coffee. Yeah, I just found out about this, and I just uh... it's a whole other language you're gonna learn. Yeah, it is. And then don't think you have yeah, to learn I, all I, I of have to, man. I mean, that's the reality. If I want to fight this, I have to understand the bullshit. And, and six takes. months from now, you will be amazed at all the information that you have picked up. Well, in that six careful. months, should I go ahead and get the radiation or cut out or all the shit? Well, what do I know? I mean, I, you, I, okay, here, I, I want to give you this. So this... Uh, for yeah, my I'm advice, you, my yeah. advice, I've been talking to a lot of people yeah. for, over the years. You have to get comfortable with your plan. Mm -hmm. And now exactly the right. other thing is you have to slow down. This is the hardest time in your life to slow down, but you need to slow down, right? And get comfortable with what your plan is. And once in some people, they need to talk to one doctor. Some need to talk to two. Some people need to get on an airplane, whatever you need to do, get comfortable with your plan and then trust it. Yes. Trust who so you're with and what your plan is down. and so never look always... back because there's no do-overs. Yeah, and so that. once you can get, you know, slow down, get comfortable. And right now you, you've, you're, you're kind of just, you haven't got there yet, but you will, exactly. you will. The Trust only me. other you advice will. I'd say Trust is me. don't interview like 10 dot, like meaning you shouldn't like you, nope. my dad sort of went through this. Like you can overanalyze things mm -hmm. two or three people, then go with your gut. Because if you start I'm going, yeah, if talking. you start going five, six, seven, eight people, you, there's no well, ending. The you're gonna keep I, going. You're looking for an answer that's I, probably you're I waiting for someone to that. give you. <laughs> but like you said, everybody's different. But I have easily ten people that have gone through this right now and have already gone through it that I know. Well, I, I meant I meant this position. Is this an epidemic? No, one in eight yeah. men are going to get it. You were yeah. in the beginning. Well, yeah, it's got, yeah, I know. <laughs> if you know, if you, no, but no, no. If you know sixty guys, then the statistically you should know ten. They just don't talk about it. That well, yeah, yeah. Because I'm my sure. my golf group, we got... I just talk to guys I know. But they, most you know, of us tell them they go, "Oh yeah, listen, man, yeah. I had the, the uh, thing is the radiation. I did great for that. Yeah, I had another guy. Well, man, it's bad. I can't have radiation, so I had to have it cut out, and then I had to have radiation anyway. And now I'm on a fourteen thousand dollar a month bill. Don't don't take and this wrong, but 
if you talk to someone and they had a good outcome, they're going to swear that what they had was the answer. Yes. Yeah, and, I and it's they, not. I guess that is that. a great that's why I don't, I know, I'm, at least I'm adept enough to myself to realize everything is individual and what his right for him isn't going to work for me. And I've got to find my plan and I respect that. Yeah. And that's the hardest part because I feel like after like talking to, I've talked to like literally like 10,000 guys, like it should be like a pattern. And it's like, no, each of us, human beings are complex as fuck. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, so, so just be patient and slow down and you'll get comfortable and we're well, all here to support. You, I so. appreciate, I appreciate that. Thank you, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I just, I don't trust the doctor. I talked to the first thing I'm, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I didn't trust him. It looks like he was hung over. I'm, I'm a real professional cat and I'm not into, and I read people really well. And I read that situation mm -hmm. at his office, walked in totally don't like it went ahead and talked to his the radiation expert that guy was like trying to sell me a car and so i i look at it and i mean he had, he was very informative and a lovely man and i'm not putting him down by any means but there lies the human element yeah. right there you know and so i'm trying to find a professional that if i am going to have radiation or if i am going to have a cutout whatever my my decision is that i can at least know that i'm getting a competent enough surgeon that isn't going to fuck me up i mean it's just that simple and i'm on yeah. and that's what i worry about if i have the surgeon and the radiation hey you know i'm all about that too you know if i think that i've had friends that oh that like they said man hey that's the greatest thing since peanut butter but you know it's everybody has to travel their path mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i'm still at that at that point where i'm still searching so I, I'm leaving. I'm trying to. I've unfortunately I've talked to a few other doctors. Now I'm going to go. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So now I'm going to go. I'm searching okay. on another. That's okay. Be patient. You'll, yeah, you'll exactly. Yeah. yeah. How, what was your Gleason score? Oh, you don't know your Gleason score. Well, I don't know. I, all I saw from my. I remember now. It wasn't a. I. I remember seeing a six. I just looked at this piece of paper because this other uh, doctors who I'm going to deal with. I just happened to look at it and it said a six on it at the very top. And it was like, it had all these, I don't know, man. It, I know it look. There's no way. No, that could exactly. be a PSA. That I, that I could will be find out my test score. And if it's eight, then I'm, I know I'm going to be well, well, if you come to our meeting and you don't know your Gleason and PSA score, we will find you next month. Well, I yeah. do know my PSA mm -hmm. score. Well, I went from, you a will two, not be I, went from a, <laughs> I went from a two. My doctor had me at a two and I don't know why he didn't raise alarm then. Two's fine. This was about six years ago, five it's years okay. ago. Yeah. And then he, and then it went up okay. to just this last year. I hadn't done any other PSAs following that. And then this last year, I had a physical again. And it went up to 11. 11.4. Yeah. 11. Yeah. Then it went it up was to fine, 15. Though. And yeah, now it went back good. down to 10. So, so PSA, well, cancer doesn't make it go down. So I don't know how true that, that's a problem. So three things make it go up. Age or size. Inflammation doesn't have to be infection but inflammation or cancer um so that's why you have, so if it goes from 2 to 11 that's very concerning to 15 is very concerning but now you're telling me it went back down to 10 it went back which makes me think maybe there's some there's definitely some inflammation involved in there somewhere well i did yeah <laughs> well i i appreciate so i want to we have uh we do have a hard stop but so got... john i appreciate listening but... to my whining no, no, no. Uh -huh. no. You, we can continue. I just can't right now. So, yeah, we can go so back thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Tom. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We've all come in here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night, everyone. We'll see you guys next month.